नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी पॉडकास्ट आई एम नम्रता सिंह एवरीवन इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द बजट वेदर इट्स मैनेजिंग अ हाउस होल्ड बजट और द नेशंस बजट इंडियाज फर्स्ट बजट वॉज प्रेजेंटेड इन एटीन सिक्सटी एंड सिंस देन द एनुअल बजट अनाउंसमेंट हैज बिकम एन इंटेग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्रीज डिस्कोर्स बट हैव यू एवर वंडर्ड वॉट गोज इन टू क्राफ्टिंग द यूनियन बजट वेल it's a meticulous process involving economic forecasting detailed planning and strategic policy making to guide the nation towards growth and stability so to explain how the budget is prepared from its initial planning stages to its announcement we have a very special guest with us today dr k v subramanian former chief economic adviser mr subramanian many thanks for joining us here on sunset tv my pleasure Uh, welcome to the show sir and we are glad uh, you could be with us today so let's talk about budget uh, mr subramanian let me begin with the most basic question about the budget process you know here there is always a curiosity among commoners that how is the national budget created how meticulously is it prepared so at namrata i will speak uh, based on my experience of having been part of four budgets from 2019 to 2021 uh, my guess is that the process remains very similar there are a lot of steps that are involved uh, as you know the economic survey which is tabled one day before the budget is also a critical element of the budgeting process uh, usually the economic survey uh lays out a, a vision for policies that need to be implemented and uh, that uh, often times is uh, incorporated into the budget but a couple of critical elements that uh, go as inputs from the economic survey uh, is one the growth rate that is going to be assumed for the budget remember you have to keep in mind that the tax revenues that are budgeted critically depend on the nominal growth rate of the economy therefore the real growth rate the inflation um, and also the tax buoyancy is a very important input and these are three aspects that go into the budget from the chief economic advisor's office um, and of course the vision that is being laid out so for instance during the time that i was there the uh, first economic survey had focused on the economic strategy for india to be a 5 trillion dollar economy the second was on encouraging ethical wealth creation and the steps that are required for that and the third uh, was on the post covid economy uh, so these aspects often times uh, get incorporated into the into the budget as well uh, you would have for instance heard uh, in recent times the honorable finance minister talking about the virtuous cycle starting from private investment right. the uh, aspect yeah. of fiscal multipliers and these are all important aspects that go into uh, the budget making process i've just covered a small sampling of this okay okay so but uh, mr subramanian when crafting the budget how do we decide which areas to focus on uh, how do you balance bit Uh, between different sectors and ensure fiscal responsibility so namrata uh, i want to uh, give a sense of the conceptual aspects that are involved um, in my opinion if we uh, strip all the paraphernalia that is there in economics there are primarily two principles that guide all of economics okay. first is the fact that there is a budget whether it's whether it's a household or or the nation uh, you know money doesn't grow on trees as they say paisa ped pe nahi ukta so <laughs> right. there is a finite amount of resources that's the first principle so if a rupee is put into somewhere it is taken out from somewhere potentially second is the concept of opportunity cost um, which is do you want to put spend that you know rupee on um, capital expenditures or do you want to spend it on subsidies the reason i bring this up you know this is something that we had highlighted when a rupee is spent on subsidies for instance or revenue expenditures um, the econ- economy accumulates anywhere between 92 to 95 uh paise um in other words about anywhere between 6 to 8 paise is lost you know of, of the tax taxpayers rupee in contrast if that rupee is spent on capital expenditure then over the course of you know 3 uh, to 6 years 
uh, the economy accumulates anywhere between four to six rupees. So you can see how you know the opportunity cost matters a lot. So this is a second element that goes into the budgeting process. Okay. Uh, in terms of the mechanics, what happens is that you know all ministries come and. You know, they send their written um, demands. What are the things that they're planning, you know, planning to do? Those written things all come to the Ministry of Finance. You know, um, and they are, there are also meetings held. St very stakeholder consultations are done. You know, these are meetings chaired by the Honorable Finance Minister with the industry, with the different elements of the economy, economists themselves, and inputs are taken from those as well in coming up with. Um, oftentimes, these the the big idea that underlies the budget drives which sectors will get uh, emphasis for instance you know over the last few budgets the emphasis has been on infrastructure creation capital expenditure right. and therefore those ministries the line ministries that are responsible for capital expenditure end up getting more attention so sir a nation is made up of its people and public involvement is crucial to the democratic process so how are the views and needs of various stakeholders you know such as revenue department industry associates and trade associates uh, incorporated into the budget so in recent times there's been a lot of um, you know for instance all the you know both the prime minister's office and the honorable finance minister's office get inputs you know their online uh, ways in which uh, you know citizens involvement is also ideas ideas are taken those ideas are are passed through are actually gone through carefully of course as i said you know citizens representation is also uh, uh, provided through the many stakeholders that come for instance you know, labor unions, uh, you know, come and meet the leaders from there. Uh, leaders from some of the consumers, you know, side end up uh, um, sharing their inputs as well. That's how this process of taking into account the preferences of various uh, stakeholders uh, is, 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 is done. Uh, you also would see, you know, um, uh, in recent times uh, on social media, you know, the some of the narratives that are going on in social media are also uh, looked at carefully. For instance, the, in this bu budget, forthcoming budget, there is actually a lot of talk of some, you know, uh, um, some some maybe tax cuts for the middle class. So these things, such such narratives that are building up in the social media, are also incorporated and and are thought. I I must tell you that you know eventually what appears. You know, in the budget is actually a very, you know, a delicate balancing act of taking all these preferences into account. Just okay. because something eventually did not appear in the budget does not mean that it was not considered. You know, it is that act of balancing that means that you have to emphasize some and possibly emphasize some others less. Uh, uh, we also have MyGov platforms, you know, bridging the divide uh, to yes. connect with the government. Tell us something more about that. Right. So that's where a lot of the inputs end up coming. Um, you know, those inputs can be in the form of things that citizens want to be improved or they may be suggestions. Um, and, and these are then, uh, you know, filtered through. Uh, I used to have, you know, uh, some some colleagues of mine who would actually look through very carefully and, and sort of take the essence out of this and present it to me. I would go through them carefully. Similarly, you know, all the other officers as well, uh, you know, would, 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 would do that. So that's how uh, a lot of the inputs that go into MyGov um, are taken into account. There are also, you know, uh, um, inputs that are uh, you sort of in using technology are passed through and you know for instance the uh, prime minister's office actually has now i think iit kanpur has built this uh, across many languages seven eight languages inputs right. are shared and those are also you know analyzed and and shared with the ministry of finance uh, so you know sabka saath sabka vikas is a wonderfully inclusive slogan uh, how does one ensure that this vision is reflected in the financial planning as I mentioned, uh, the some of the themes that underlie the budget, um, you know, and that depends on the uh, need of the hour. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, during COVID, it was really critical to take care of some of the vulnerable sections of society. At the same time, it was equally important to spur the supply side of the economy because um, we had anticipated at that time that the supply side uh, will be adversely impacted. So these aspects are taken into account uh, to ensure that Sapka Saath and Sapka uh, Vikas and Sapka Vishwas are right. all together uh, taken care of. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so Suji Ka Halwa is one of my favorite dessert. And speaking, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, brings me to the Halwa related question. 
So this halwa yes. ceremony marks the start of the quarantine period for officials involved in printing the budget. And this process yes. is kept very secretive. And we all yes. became familiar with the quarantine during the pandemic. So, but can you Correct. explain what happens in the North Block of the Finance Ministry during the budget <laughs> lockdown? So, there's some very interesting things that happen. You know, firstly, I noticed for the first time in uh, this was in the 2019 budget that um, there are police police people who are stationed outside every office. So, for instance, if I have to even go for a you know for a for a nature a call you know to attend to nature's call, then <laughs> I have the the, the the police personnel also accompany from my office till the you know till the bathroom. So uh, it's it's a very interesting aspect that I had noticed. Um, this happens as soon as the quarantine period starts. Now, uh, the halwa ceremony is very important because those people who are actually working on the budget and printing the budget, um, you know, things like, for instance, budget at a glance and many other, just the printing of the physical printing of the budget um, you know, and the economic survey, they end up, they actually work in a very secluded manner. So the halwa ceremony is held before that they they you know essentially will sleep there, eat there. They cannot even you know leave. Uh, so all their needs are taken care of to ensure that the process is extremely secretive. I'll share one more input. You know, as soon as I joined as the chief economic advisor, yeah. uh, the the person who used to help me in my office, you know, gave me a specific. He said he told me in Hindi, "Sab ap mujhe kafi chote hai, isle main aapko salad dunga." कि जब तक ये बजट हो ना हो जाए आप जो कागज हैं आपके कागज आप खुद काट के जाइए मेरे हाथों में भी मत दीजिए आप सो यू नो दैट वाज दैट वाज दैट टाइम गिवन डू यू मिस दैट पीरियड to be not to be honest actually i i i you know um, ha had a very good very fulfilling tenure and uh, was able to contribute was able to work very closely so uh, after the budget is presented uh, on february 1st what next step uh, do the government take as in specifically you know how do you ensure that the announcement made for various sectors you know if i talk about women children are effectively implemented so the first thing that happens is immediately after the budget uh, there is a press conference that is held um, the honorable finance minister along with the rest of the team you know uh, um, visit the national media center and then there a press conference is held where some of the nuanced aspects of the budget the honorable finance minister explains um, and she takes questions as well and so that you know everybody can understand aspects that are so th those aspects that are sort of some between the lines motivations etc those other the sort of added color is provided by the honorable finance minister in this press conference right. after which um, th those of us who are actually you know who had helped in the budget process we go on to various television networks share you know the and aspects so we essentially you know go from channel to channel generally it is two of us so i you know um, i i would accompany one of the secretaries um, to go and explain uh, the, the budget i'm sure right. uh, similarly anand would be doing it now uh, and then there are also consultations held with various industry bodies fiki you know cii assocham um, these these are held so these are all ways for the you know those that have been involved in the budget making process to go and explain uh, what went behind the budget what you know what's the rationale behind it what's the, what are the big picture themes and how will it benefit the citizens all these are aspects actually that uh, end up getting covered yeah so uh, how does the uh, you know government monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of the budget allocation so that's a good question um in fact in the as part of the budget process itself you know uh, the all budget announcements are tracked um, okay. you know what, all the announcements you know how what is the status of of these announcements so there is an elaborate process uh, in the ministry of finance uh, um, uh, you know in in all the departments within the ministry of finance to track all the budget announcements which of those have been actually fulfilled what stage um, each of these announcements is in if there are any past uh, announcements that have not been fully implemented you know uh, those are all tracked and and are reported to the uh, you know to the honorable finance minister on a periodic basis okay okay uh, so mr subramanian this brings to me uh, to my last question uh, is what is it that you would like to see in this union budget um i think a lot several of uh, the positive aspects that we've seen in the 
past few budgets. I think I would like to see a continuation of the same. First, uh, it is very important to continue the uh, the focus on capital expenditure infrastructure creation. As I've said multiple times, uh, if we compare to some of the advanced economies, they have already built their infrastructure. We are in the process of building them. So the, the impetus on infrastructure creation needs to continue because uh, when infrastructure is created well, uh, that is something which uh, then, you know, enables private investment to come in. Um, uh, an aspect that we had covered during COVID, which actually needs to be thought about, is uh, increasing some of the allocations for healthcare. Um, I think healthcare expenditure, if I recall, in the chapter in 2020-21 economic survey, we had shown that if from the current level of about 1.5% of GDP, right. uh, if the spending on healthcare is brought to 2.5%, just 1% increase, you know, uh, out-of-pocket expenditures for healthcare can decrease drastically by at least half. And that is something which is important because oftentimes a lot of households go into, you know, poverty uh, and poverty trap uh, because of healthcare expenditure. You'll recall that wonderful movie, Three Idiots, where there's that scene where, you know, uh, um, uh, Raju's mother actually talks about how half of her salary goes into taking care of her, you know, of uh, Raju's ailing father. I think that right. is very symptomatic of what a lot of households go through. So therefore, healthcare spending, I think, is, you know, increasing that is important, both at the central and the state level, primarily at the state level, because it's a state subject as well. At the same time, I, I think I would really emphasize the rationalization of the tax code. Um, you know, you would recall that in 2019, there was a report that was, and I was part of that committee that had examined the tax code. The tax code we have is from 1961. Right. So it's actually almost, uh, um, you know, eight, eight, eight decades, decades old and a lot of, you know, changes have happened. So really benefit from the faceless assessment that has been introduced. Um, I think it is really important to streamline the tax code the draft tax you know uh, code that was enacted by this committee was uh, in terms of the number of pages was about half of the existing one number of provisions also reduced by almost two thirds so a lot of streamlining and this is important to i uh, know really enable ease of doing business because tax is one of the key ways in which ease of doing business is enabled um, the current situation is where because of the very voluminous and the amendments you know uh, um, that have happened there are in internally inconsistent provisions in the code right. which then you know you know introduces a lot of discretion and that is something that has to be avoided um, and and that will really enable um, you know uh, uh, citizens and and corporates and you know per, uh, as our individuals also to be able to reduce their uh, any bother that they have with the tax tax department and this is a critical element of these of doing business so these are three key aspects that i would mention i think the uh, the, the path to fiscal consolidation that has been laid out uh, is you know that should be followed i would also uh, encourage the you know um, uh, the, the ministry to you know to to actually enact uh, and bring to parliament the frbm um, you know that the changed frbm and this is something that you know um, those of us who were there at that time had worked on i think it is important to actually commit to uh, um, but at the same time be very nuanced in thinking about fiscal policy something that was covered in the economic survey, the COVID economic survey, where we showed very clearly that it is growth that, that leads to decline in debt, debt to GDP. And for that, you know, uh, uh, spending that encourages growth is critically important and infrastructure and capital expenditure uh, and, uh, you know, CapEx are very important for this. Right. Uh, so the union budget is easily the most eagerly awaited public announcement and continues to play a pivotal role in shaping the India story. And it's not merely a financial statement, but also a reflection of the country's priorities and a blueprint for its future. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Subramanian, and explaining the budget process in such a relatable way. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, viewers, that is all I have for you in this podcast. Thanks for watching.